Hello everyone, welcome to my channel once again. In today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can find student housing if you are coming to study abroad. Towards the end of this video, I'll also share some of the things that you should absolutely be doing before you finalize any housing abroad. So make sure you watch this video till the very end. If you are new to my channel, my name is Parul. I have been staying in US for over seven years, working here for almost five years. And I create content in this channel around studying abroad and education in the hope that I can help others who are planning to come and study abroad. If you have plans to come and study abroad or settle in abroad, make sure you subscribe to my channel because you're going to get a lot of valuable information. Okay, so let's come back to our topic for today, which is student housing. For student housing, you have two options. You have the on-campus housing, which is usually provided by the university, where you stay on the campus. Usually this type of housing is much more expensive than the off-campus housing, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And there are some hidden fees as well. So if you decide to stay on campus, you are not only just paying your rent, but sometimes there are some other fees like maintenance fee or you may have to get the university's meal plan, which is extra money that you have to pay out of your pocket every month. So I personally do not recommend on campus, but if you absolutely want to stay on campus, then I would recommend that you apply pretty early because they usually have limited number of spots and they fill pretty quickly. Next housing option is the off campus housing option. That means you're not staying on the campus, but you are staying somewhere closer to your university or campus. To find good off-campus housing options, first thing that you should be doing is to check your own university's website to see if they recommend any areas for students. Some universities do, some universities do not provide such recommendations. For example, the university where I went to study, the Georgia State University, it did not have any such guidance, but there are universities, for example, uh, University of Georgia does provide recommendations to students around the areas that they should be targeting, what type of rent they should expect to pay if they pick an area and how safe each area is. So this could be a good starting point for you to identify the areas that you want to target for your house search. If this information is not available, don't sweat. Next thing you need to do is to go on Facebook and try to find Facebook groups for your university. In those groups, there are usually a lot of housing options available that you can browse through. You can also post that you are looking for a house closer to the university. So you may find some leads through that option as well. The other thing that I would highly recommend is to find your alumni, your seniors through Facebook or LinkedIn and reach out to them to ask them what type of housing option would they recommend? These are the people who have lived through what you will be going through. So they may be able to provide you with good recommendations that may end up saving you a lot of money and hassle. If you are an international student, most probably you will not have a car. So in that case, try to find housing options that are closer to a bus stop or a train station so that you can easily use the public transportation system to move around. To identify such areas, try to look at the city's bus map or train map. For example, when I came to Georgia for my master's, I looked at the train map to identify the areas that I should be targeting. If you look at the screen, you see that my campus was in Buckhead and Buckhead was really expensive. So I wanted to find other nearby areas where I can find affordable housing option. And I found that Lindbergh Center is just one stop away from Buckhead and the housing options were comparatively cheaper in Lindbergh than in Buckhead. So I ended up renting a house in Lindbergh rather than Buckhead. And I was able to identify this by looking at the train map. After you have found the areas you want to target, there are certain things that you need to be careful about or you need to know about before you finalize your apartment or house. First of all, never forget about safety. As an international student, you may want to go with the cheapest option because you want to save money. But remember that safety is much more important than just saving a few hundred bucks. Before you finalize any house, check the crime rate of that area. There are many websites available online where you can check this, such as Neighborhood Scout, Spot Crime, etc. Use these websites to check the crime rate of the areas that you are targeting and only go with a house 
if that area is safe enough. Next thing that you should definitely consider is basic amenities in an apartment. For example, having a dishwasher, having a washer dryer in an apartment. If you're going to a city like New York, then you may not find these amenities in a lot of apartments. So you just have to deal with it. But if you're going to a city where you can find these amenities in an apartment or a house, definitely go for it. Apartment without these amenities may be cheaper, but think about how much time you're going to waste if you don't have a washer dryer in your apartment. You'll have to take your laundry somewhere else every week. Sometimes the machines are busy, so you may have to come back. So think about all the time that you'll be spending on your laundry. And according to me, time is the biggest asset. It is something you never get back. So always take that into consideration and be willing to pay a little extra for these basic amenities and for your own convenience. Third thing that you need to do is to make sure that you are gelling well with your roommates. Once you sign your lease agreement, you are stuck with your roommates for at least a year. So make sure you like them, you are able to gel with them. Otherwise, it may cause you a lot of stress. One of my friends had some roommates he did not like. Those roommates were really unhygienic. They would cook in the kitchen, but would never clean after cooking. They would never clean the dishes. So uh, you'll see a pile of dishes in the sink. You'll see flies all over it. And that ended up causing a lot of stress to my friends. Make sure you do not end up in a similar situation. Talk to your potential roommates to see if you are gelling well with them or if you're compatible with them. Fourth thing you need to be careful about is to make sure that you review and understand your lease agreement properly. Lease agreements are legally binding, so understand it properly before you sign it. And lastly, beware of scams. If you find someone through social media and they are sending you a lease agreement for a house that you like or an apartment that you like, make sure that it's legit. Check the address on Google Maps. Call the number on the lease agreement. If, if it's an apartment complex, a lot of times those apartment complexes have their own website. So go to their website, get the email from the website, send an email to the apartment complex to check if the lease agreement is something that they send. Thank you very much. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any other questions or doubts, put them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer those. If you like my video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button so that you can see similar videos from me in the future and other people like you can also find my content easily. Thank you. See you in my next video.